Hi guys, my name is Mika and I'm a writer and a professional home organizer. Today I've gathered every single loose leaf paper from inside of my house and I've brought them to the office to declutter them with you. In this video, I'll show you my methodology on how to declutter your papers and then I'll give you 10 simple but super effective tips on how to take care of your paper clutter and also how to maintain it after it's organized. Okay, so diving straight into tip number one. When it comes time to declutter a bunch of papers to sit down and actually go through it all, you're going to want to create four categories. File is the first category. So this is pretty self-explanatory, but these are basically papers that you need to keep but you don't need immediate access to. Then you want to have a category for action items. So action items are papers that you come across where you need to still take action on them. So it could be paying a bill or registering a warranty or renewing a driver's license, but things that you need to do should go in this action item area. Then you'll want to shred pile for any documents that you come across that have sensitive information on them. You want to shred them to prevent identity theft and then the last category is recycle for the papers that you don't need. And those are the four categories that I highly suggest keeping it to as you go through your papers. And I will go through my papers with these four categories and I'll show you exactly how. Okay, so tip number two. It's going to sound a little bit silly, but I promise this is such a ridiculously effective way to go through your papers. And it kind of even makes it fun. But these types of paper bags, <laughs> they work wonders. And there's like a psychology behind it. So whenever we have an empty bag, we humans psychologically have a desire to fill that bag. It's just satisfying to fill it. This little handy free trick here, it's great actually for kids too. I've been in so many clients' homes where a parent will say to their child, hey, go declutter like five things from your room. And the child will come back and say, oh, I don't want to declutter anything. And then I'll say, hand them an empty paper bag and tell them to fill it with things that they no longer want, that they want to declutter. They'll always come back with a full bag. And it's just our psychological need to fill things. So many supermarkets, for instance, use our desire to fill things to their advantage. And that's why sometimes it's kind of hard to find the handheld carts in the supermarkets, but it's really easy to find the push carts. They're right at the front entrance, ready to go. Well, the bigger the cart, the more apt we are to fill it with things. So whenever I go to the supermarket, unless I know I need a big trip worth of stuff, I always look for the handheld carts. I rarely take a cart because otherwise I'm just gonna fill it, fill it, fill it. That might not apply to everybody because maybe you have a family you're shopping for. However, something to keep in mind. And the size of shopping carts are increasing because say if you go to the supermarket and you get a milk and a, some bread, some cheese and some vegetables and you have it in your hands or in a cart. It feels pretty satisfying, like you've gotten a lot. But if you have a large empty cart and you've just put those items in, it almost feels like you're not buying enough. But that is why, because we have a need to fill things. Anyways, this bag is fantastic for both the shred and recycle pile because it encourages us to let go of more things that we don't need because it's our desire to keep versus our desire to fill the bag. So you'll see this in action too, but it's like the most simplest free little trick and it works wonders. And my third tip is to utilize a shredder. In my early 20s, I used to work for Japan Airlines in their logistics division, and I was a translator slash liaison between a Japanese company that sold shredders and American companies that were going to buy from them. And during that time, I learned so much about identity theft. And it's very prevalent. It's not just digital, it's also analog. And so it's definitely worth that extra couple of seconds that it takes to shred. If you have a shredder, I think you should utilize it and then you should keep it in an accessible place. So it's a tool that will be fantastic in helping you keep on top of your paper clutter. I also don't think a strip cut shredder is good enough. I think micro cut or better is important. I personally have an Amazon basic shredder and I love it. It's the micro cut one. I'll link it down below in case you're interested in checking it out. But I initially saw it at a client's house and I love shredding things. So I was shredding their papers for them and I was like, well, <laughs> the shredder is very smooth. I really like it. And then I ended up ordering the same one and I recommend it to all my clients. I just think it's a really good machine for the price point. And my tip number four is just start. 
This is actually very important as well. There's this awesome Rumi quote that says, as you start to walk on the way, the way appears. Sometimes we humans tend to complicate things and then we want complicated solutions to solve those issues. But sometimes the simple solutions are the most effective and so hence just start. And remember too that a lot of clutter is rooted in fear or the lack of or the fear of not having enough. So identify the papers that you actually need and that will help you and then which ones are clutter. Speaking of just start, we can start now. Junk mail is an issue that I will get to, but for the moment, I will just put this off to the side and then I will tackle my paper clutter. So I am gonna use these bags for myself as well. You can even simplify it as well. And then on the side of the bag, instead of having something like this, you could just uh, write with a Sharpie, recycle or shred. So this is essentially trash, but it'll go in the recycling bin. So these are all the papers that I don't need. Okay, so now I have a bag to fill up for my shred. So with these, I like to keep both of these on the floor. So I like to keep those bags on the floor. So I just put them on either side of me. They're shred on one side and then recycle on the other. That way I have this whole countertop space to work. And then I will have my action items right here. And then my file items I will put off to the right. And a lot of this section will probably go toward my file items and then action items, I'll just have a pile here. And let's just start. You know, actually there's a tip that I was going to save for later, but I think that this is a good tip to go into now is uh, setting a timer. So optionally, you can set a timer, and a timer makes the process kind of fun because it's almost like a challenge against the timer. How much can I get done in a 30 minute span or a one hour span? And the other good thing about setting a timer is that it lets you focus without you having to worry about losing track of time. So for now, I'm just gonna set the timer for 30 minutes and then focus all the way through. I don't have to worry about three hours going by and not even realizing because now I've just set the timer for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, it'll just alert me and then I will hit repeat and start again because I've set aside enough time today. And actually I recommend when we're talking about time, I recommend that you set aside an hour or two hours or three hours just to go through and get as much as you can done. Because the sooner that you get this done, the more time that it's going to save you in the long run. So anyways, timer set for 30 minutes and I will get started. I'm finding some notes that uh, Mostly I don't need, but there's a couple of interesting things. So I'm just going to throw away some of the papers, but write down a couple of the notes. So here's a great paper that I found. I'm into a bunch of new projects lately. So these were kind of just research notes on a scrap piece of paper and most of everything I've already accomplished and it's done, but there are a couple few things that are just really good information to know for the future. So that has all been transferred and then now that will be a shred. It's always nice to have like a hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of tea too, to just keep you company as you're decluttering. So I'm starting to form my piles for my file. 
So this is actually YouTube video ideas that I think could be helpful to people and it's research and information relating to those videos. And then this one is goal setting. Then this pile has to do with my website, budgeting, and then writing. And that's what's come up so far. And everybody will have different stocks to file, but as you go through the papers, it'll become apparent. You'll say, wow, I really need to keep this item. Let me put it here. Then, oh, I really need to keep this item as well. Let me put it here. Now the next like item to that, you can put it right on top and make little stacks. And what files will need to be created will become very apparent as you're going through your papers. So let's continue on. Catalogs like this could be looked through very quickly and then put to the recycle. Then you don't waste time later looking through something that you don't really need. Yay, and I am done with this pile that was here. I repeated the timer three times, so that took roughly an hour and a half. And hence, just start because you'll get the momentum to keep going, and then next thing you know, you'll be done. So what I did here is this is my action pile. Whether it's stuff that I should read, bills to take care of, people to follow up with. I think everybody should have a to-do folder. And so every day this week, I'll go through and I'll tackle maybe one or two items. And then next thing you know, it will be empty. The goal is to keep this empty or as close to empty as possible. And then I created different stacks to file. So this is for the children's book that I'll be releasing soon. I underestimated the amount of work that would go into this book. I knew it would be a lot of work, but it is a lot of work to create a children's book. So this, until I'm done with the book, I will hold on to these rough drafts for reference. This is research for YouTube video ideas, research and notes. These are goals for certain projects that I'm working on for other books. Then. I have something for the dog. It'll go in the dog's file. And the reason I'm stacking it like this is because I'm at the office right now, so I'm gonna take it home. But when you finish, you should go straight to your filing cabinet and file these items away. So I have a medical basic thing here. Stuff for my website. This is a Christmas card for my dad and I love it. So I, it will go in my memorabilia box when I get home. Then a couple of coupons, which usually I throw these away, but this I might actually use. So I'll just put it here. So here is my recycle. It has kind of a bit of a weight to it. And then here is my shred, a little bit less, but same. So good, those got a little bit filled up. Probably about a quarter of my, no. About half of my stack is in there. So this is what I'm left with, plus my action items. Now for my tip number seven, when you're decluttering your stack of papers, you need to look through pretty much every paper to make sure that you're not throwing away anything important. So keep your focus on one item at a time, because if you look at this huge stack, you're going to be overwhelmed, maybe. So if you just focus on the piece at hand and then Okay, I've made a decision on this. Now let me grab the next thing. Focus on this, make a decision on this. Instead of looking at the whole stack, it totally makes a big difference. And my clients, sometimes they say, I could have never done this pile without you, but not really. I think I'm there to empower them. They make all the decisions on their own, whether to keep or not to keep. 
They'll ask me a couple questions, but for the most part, they know. I do do this though. When they start looking at the pile and I see they start kind of eyeing how much there is, I'll hand them one thing and I'll say, what about this? And then they'll focus on this, make a decision, and then I'll hand them something else. What about this? They'll focus on it, make a decision, and then a couple more times and the momentum's back. So it's really important not to focus on the big pile, but just one at a time, one after the other, one after the other. And each sheet may seem small, but you'll make a lot of headway very quickly with that method. And tip number eight is the two minute rule. This is actually a productivity tip, but it applies so beautifully to clutter and keeping the home clean. So basically if something takes less than two minutes to do, just do it right then. And that compounds and it ends up saving time. If you can just do it right now, do it right now so that it's not on your mind, looping through your mind throughout the day. So the human mind is estimated to have something like 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day and most of them are repeating. So say if I know I have to go through this junk mail, but I don't do it. It's gonna loop in my mind a certain amount of time. Even if it's not a priority thing, it's going to take up mental space. So hence why the two minute rule comes in really handy. If you can do it right then, do it. It's off of your mind. It's not in your energy field. You're done with it. So definitely try to take the two minute rule into consideration. It's a really great productivity hack. And tip number nine is to go digital. If you go on auto pay for your bills and also on paperless billing, it saves a lot of paper from piling up in your home. For your credit card bill, you can just check it around the time that the payment's due or two or three times a month just to stay on top of your balance and know what you're spending. If you aren't already on auto pay and paperless billing, I think that will help a lot with paper clutter. And tip number 10 is junk mail. Check your mail regularly, daily if possible, and just take care of it right then. If you take care of it right away, it doesn't pile up, and junk mail can quickly become overwhelming. And to receive less junk mail, you can also contact the Direct Marketing Association, which I'll also link down below. I think you have to pay about a $2 processing fee, and then you don't get junk mail or you're on less lists for about 10 years. So because I knew I was going to make this video, I kept my junk mail for the course of a week and also the week before that. So I have a really good habit of checking my mail every day and then I take care of it immediately. Whatever needs to be shredded is shredded and whatever needs to be recycled or thrown away it is. So it's very easy. It's something that's simple to fit into your routine. However, when you let it pile up, look how quickly two weeks can pile up. And I go into a lot of clients' homes and this is a source of contention for a lot of people. And when people don't go through it right away, they let it pile up and it piles up quickly. I've been to so many houses with so many bags of junk mail and important documents are in there too because they just don't even wanna look through the junk mail. So anyways, I'm just gonna show you how very quickly we can go through this. So I finished going through the junk mail and it took about 10 to 15 minutes of just rapidly going through it. Here's the amount of stuff that I'm going to keep out of all that. And I'm either gonna file or have an action item out of here. This is the amount of stuff to shred, which it's about double the keep pile. These are four catalogs that I will look through tonight and then let go of. So that'll just be kind of fun. And then those will be gone tonight. And then here, is the recycle pile, it's heavy. So you see how it splits up. With most of junk mail, it could end up taking up a lot of time, so just deal with it immediately. And if you'd like to see a video on filing systems or any anything else, anything else that has to do with decluttering or organization, put a comment down below and then I'll try to make a video on it. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful and please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful. And then also please subscribe. And here is another video that you might be interested in, uh, the 30 day minimalism challenge. Until next time.